Nodes are the bread and butter of Godot, and one of its core concepts for working with the engine. But nodes aren't everything, and in fact you may find them to be overkill for a lot of uses since their relationship to scenes and the scene tree is their main draw. This relationship is great for displaying sprites and models or plugging into input and frame events, but nodes do also come with overhead, both in terms of performance and just usability since they have to be added and removed from the scene tree to use, that you may not want if you instead just need a place to drop some code. So if you need something a bit more lightweight, or maybe just something more purely code oriented, you may want to consider the ref counted class. As the name would suggest to those of you with a moderate amount of programming experience, the ref counted class is a plain, straightforward object that uses reference counting for memory management. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of reference counting, this means that Godot tracks how many references there are to a given ref counted object so that it knows when that object is no longer needed. In practice, this means that you can simply instantiate a ref counted object, use it for however long you need to, and then just move on when done with it without having to manually free the object. Godot will clean things up for you, with a caveat that we'll discuss later. The ref counted class forgoes any association with the scene tree, so there are no input events such as unhandled input, no process or physics process functions, there's also no ready function, so if you're used to initializing your code there, you'll want to instead use the init function. What you get for all these missing features though is one of the most lightweight types in the engine. This makes it a great choice for anything you want to make that is purely code oriented. In my own projects, this base class is typically used for things like AI decision makers, containers for holding typed data, and miscellaneous utility functions. To use the ref counted class, you just extend from it like you would any other script, add a class name, and then write your code. At runtime, you can then instantiate it using the class name you assign to it and start using it. From there, it's time to get to work and write whatever code you need to write. But there is still that caveat on reference counting that I hinted at earlier. As mentioned, Godot tracks how many references there are to ref counted objects and will mark them for deallocation when they are no longer used, and this usually works as expected. Say you have a node in your game and its functionality is extended by some ref counted component. While that node is active, Godot will see that the ref counted object has a reference to it and is therefore unsafe to destroy. When you go to free that node, Godot will then see that there is a ref counted object with no references to it, is therefore not being used by anything, and will free it from memory as expected. But say you have two components on that node that hold a reference to one another. When the parent node is free, Godot will see that both components are still being referenced by something and will not free them from memory. The same can also happen if you have a ref counted object referencing itself. And all of this applies even if these cyclical references are separated by a few hops through your code. Since Godot is simply counting the number of references to a given object, hence the class name, it does not know that these objects are no longer reachable or usable and will not free them, resulting in a memory leak. To get around this, you can use the weak ref function to get a reference to the object that will not keep it alive if all that remains are weak references meaning that in the example of two objects referencing one another, everything will work as expected once the node is freed. Godot will see that the only references remaining on each of those objects are weak references and will free both of them. This is probably not an issue you're likely to run into often, but it is important to keep in mind as you use more ref counted objects in your code so that you don't run into any unexpected issues. And that's really all there is to say about this class. It's a simple, lightweight option for running code in your game that doesn't require direct access to the scene tree, and it's definitely worth considering for your future projects.